Good morning, everyone. Good morning, every brothers and sister online. Let's read First Samuel chapter nineteen. We can divide it into two paragraph. Verse one to seven is the first paragraph. Is how Jonathan saved so、uh, David, and then verse eight to the end. Um, is talking about David escape from Saul. Verse one. Now Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and to all servants, and that, and they should kill David. But Jonathan Saul's son delighted greatly in David. So Jonathan told David, saying, "My father Saul seeks to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard until morning, and stay in a secret place and hide." And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak with my father about you. Then what I observe, I will tell you. So from the beginning of chapter nineteen, um, Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and to all his servants, and. Actually, in the bottom of the source has he want to kill David already. He he just um when um this is only in the bottom of Saul's heart, and this mind is um in the darkness. But this darkness becomes bigger and bigger, and so no need to、um, hide about this thought. And so from the verse one, actually, so just spoke to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that he he want to kill David. He not only tell about his own son Jonathan, but also spoke to all his servants. So this is in a public that all the people know that he want to kill David because Jonathan delighted David greatly. So Jonathan told David that his father so seeks to kill him. And he said, "Therefore, he say, 'You just hide yourself and stay in a secret place, and I will ask my father, and I will ask him whether he was really want to kill you or not. And after that, I will tell you what should you do.'" And verse four. Thus Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul his father, and said to him, "Let not the king sin against his servant against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his words have been very good toward you. For he took his life in his hands and killed the Philistine, and the Lord brought about great deliverance for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced." Why then will you sin against innocent blood to kill David without a cause? So Jonathan is then on the truth, and he said, "Let not the king sin a、um, sin against his servant against David, because he has not sinned against you." And he reminded his father, "His works have been very good toward you." Because David never rebel Saul, and what David done actually all were good toward Saul, and everything David you、uh, David done actually was to establish the kingdom of Saul, and he killed the Philistine. And he make his kingdom more stronger and stronger. And so, what Jonathan saw is what David saw. Ah,、uh, what ah,、uh, what Jonathan saw is David is good to your kingdom. Is good to you. But 
but actually Seoul was not um, have the same view, have the same point of view. But Jonathan thinks that David is good to his father's kingdom. That's why Jonathan, um, Jonathan delighted David greatly, and Jonathan just spoke to his father and say, "Why then will you sin against innocent blood to kill David without cause?" Actually, it is a、uh, very heavy comment. Because Saul actually is Jonathan's father and also his boss. So for here, Jonathan is pointing out that actually your thought is sin was a great sin because this is a sin that you you against innocent blood. If you kill someone, actually is a sin already, and you. You want to kill someone with innocent blood? It is a even greater sin. And he was his son-in-law, and you, David is your important servant, and David is also an anointed one by God. So David actually is not a normal, normal person. It is a Great incident, and it is really seen to God. But Jonathan here was really brave. He just stand up, rise up, and pointing out that this is not a good thing. Actually, he wants to kill David. Is a great sin because he um he kills someone with innocent blood. Is just like you give yourself a tomb. So this is um. Um, remind from Jonathan. For the Ten Commandments is is very clearly that we cannot kill anyone. And verse six. So so he did the voice of Jonathan and so swore as the Lord lives, he shall not be killed. Then Jonathan called David and Jonathan told him all these things. So Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in the in his presence as in times past. Actually, Saul know that what Jonathan said or was true. Nothing can argue. So, Saul just、um, oppressed himself,、um, and he just swore, "As the Lord lives, he shall not be killed." And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan told him all these things. So Jonathan is just like a fortress. In between Saul and David, and David can still in his in the presence before David. And here is that, and David was in his presence at in times past. For this paragraph, I think God reminded us, for Jonathan and Saul is totally different. 
Actually, is it David is is a threat of Jonathan? Because so is the king was the king that time already, but by the rules, actually, if David um died or I'm、uh, sorry, um if Saul died or Saul not the king anymore, and anymore actually should be Jonathan go up to become the king, so for Jonathan actually. So for for the for the kingdom of Saul pass away, actually is David, but not Jonathan. So if Jonathan have the same side of Saul, so actually Jonathan, if Jonathan have this kind of、uh, mindset, actually Jonathan will want to kill David too. But Jonathan was not. What Jonathan look is God. But Saul, the problem of Saul is actually he didn't have God. But Jonathan know that God is there. Jonathan know that. God have the better view. What Jonathan saw is the kingdom of God, but not his kingdom. The kingdom of God actually is very wide. So, for brothers and sisters, we not compare each other because for the kingdom of God is very big. God knows that who should put at what position. So for Jonathan's heart is simple and pure, and is under the light of God. But for Saul, he was complex and full of darkness. Even though they are、um, father and son, but they choose differently. Jonathan chose God. They choose to see.、Um, Have the view of the kingdom of God, so Jonathan can accept David. If Saul have this kind of mindset of Jonathan, have this different sight, I think this、um, the story will be totally different. So for the ending is totally different. And verse eight. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and struck them with a mighty blow, and they fled from him. Verse nine. Now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand, and David was playing music with his hand. Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he split away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that life. So, for verse eight, we know that that war again. For when they facing the Philistines, actually saw no need to going out. Only David had to went out to facing the war. So for what Jonathan spoke to his father, actually is right, because David actually is good to his kingdom, and he is say David struck them with a mighty blow, and they fled from him. But for verse nine, now the distressing spirit from the God came upon Saul. For the David have the victory, and the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul again. For here is say distressing spirit from the Lord we mentioned about before, because for the Israelites. All the things is came from Lord, but actually, 
for distressing spirit was not really come from the north because if not really have a、um, sin to God, we have sin and、uh, or we have any darkness. Actually, distressing spirit cannot came upon Saul. So every time when David have the victory and the distressing spirit came upon Saul, is because when David have the victory and、um, the evil things, the evil thought of Saul just came came by because Saul started to have the angry, the jealousy,、um, the killing mind. That's why. The distressing spirits came from the Lord. So for us, if we have the evil thought inside us, then the dis- distressing spirit will came to attack us also. So actually, inside Saul was full of the、um, spirit of anger. The spirit of、um, jealousy. So this is a spiritual realm. For our heart, it was full of God's words and the light of the God, and all the evil spirit will 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 be depart from us. But for the heart of Saul is totally different, because his heart full of those kind of evil thought. That's why the distressing spirit can control him. But for Jonathan, he was simple and pure, and he have and also David, and they will have the anointing of God. So even Jonathan and Saul, they are、um, relationship of a father and son, but they were totally different. Jonathan never、um, seeks to、um, get on the throne, become the king. And Jonathan. Have the anointing on him, and he can have the victory also. But for Saul, what he, what his decision keep, uh, make a wrong decision. So we should reflect ourselves. Actually, what is in the. Bottom of our heart. So for so, at the beginning, actually only a、um, jealousy in the in Saul's heart. But afterwards, he really want to kill him, and and now in this chapter, he started to um to spoke to everyone that he want to kill David, and the darkness inside Saul becomes bigger and bigger. And、then verse eleven. So also sent messengers to David's house to watch him, and to kill him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, "If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed." So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed, put a cover of goat's head for his head, and covered it with clothes. So when Saul sent messages to take David, she said he is sick. And he said Saul just sent messages to David's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning.
um, maybe um, um, from my coach just heard about that. So she just saying to David that he should have to escape, and otherwise he will be killed. And my coach just lay David down through a window and went and fled and escaped. And just tell the messengers that he is sick. And verse 15, then Saul sent the messengers back to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed then, that I may cure him. And when the messengers had come in, he, there was the image in the bed, was a cover of goat's hair for his head. Then Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me like this and sent my enemy away so that he is escaped? <coughs> and Michael answered Saul, so He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? So for the messengers came. Like the second time, Michael just tell them he was sick, and then the messenger said, "Oh, she just not let me in." And but so just say that bring him up to me in the bed that I may kill him. That means that so say don't. Um, just catch him. Even Micah not let them in. So my Michael just let him. Escape through the window is want him, or uh, want wants that David can escape far away. So so. Just came by himself and then asked him, Why you deceive me? So my coach just said, Let me go, why should I kill you? So actually, Michael is one to save David. So David fled and escaped and went to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and stayed in Nahath. Now it was told Saul, saying, Take notes, David is at Nahath in Ramah. Then Saul sent messengers to take David, and when they saw the group of prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as leader over them, the Spirit of the Lord came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when Saul was told, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. Then Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied like also. Then he also went to Ramah, and came to the great well at the seashore. He so he asked and said, "Where are Samuel and David?" So for Micah saved David. So for Saul, so actually, he want to kill one people. Actually, is easy because he was the king, but because all the people know that David is the anointed one by Prophet Samuel. And all the people know that the anointing of God is on David. And so, for verse 18, said David just escaped and went to Samuel. When Saul know about that, then Saul just send the people to kill him 
Actually, you send someone want to kill David, but before Samuel, if Samuel say no, you cannot. Who dare to kill him before Samuel? So so have sent three groups of people, and three groups of people just same because they when they came there they just um, prophesized. And they cannot kill him. But for Saul, actually, we know that for this incident, actually, God prohibited three times, one time, second time, and the third time, and not let Saul kill David. So even God prohibited three times, but Saul still want to kill him. And for the last time, Saul just came by himself and then asked, "Where are Samuel and David?" Because actually, Saul long time not see Samuel already, and Saul actually was afraid. To Saul Samuel because he really know that Samuel is a God man. He will directly pinpoint his problem, and he was afraid to Saul Samuel. But because he want to kill David, but he suddenly came upon before Samuel, and he will want to find Samuel. So actually, this is horrible. Because when Saul facing Samuel, Samuel must ask him, "Why you came here? What do you want to do?" So bef just before Samuel, he have to say, "I want to find David, and why I want to kill him." But Saul actually knows that Samuel anointed David. David was anointed by God. So actually, it's difficult to imagine. You dare to want to to facing Samuel and then want to tell Samuel that I want to kill David. <laughs> and someone said, indeed, they are at Naaf in Ramah. And verse twenty three. So he went there to Naaf in Ramah. Then the spirit of God was upon him also, and he went on and. Till he came to lay up in Ramah, and he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and they then licked all that day and all that night. Therefore, they say is Saul also among the prophets. So, for this ending of this chapter is very special. For Saul came to lay up by himself. Three verse twenty three, and it says Saul. The spirit of God was upon Saul also, and he went on and prophesied until he came to lay up to Ramah. Until he came before Samuel, he lay down and licked, licked. He just take off all his clothes. What well, actually what um Saul wear is the king clothes. So he. He just lay off all his clothes, just like a baby when he came to the earth, and he keep prophesying day and all that day and all that night, and cannot stop. And therefore, they say is Saul also among the prophets? Why God have to have to do that? Actually, it's very strange. What he wanted to do is want to kill David, and he was a king. But on the way, he just、um, touched by the spirit of God, and he keep prophesizing and stripped off his clothes, and he keep prophesizing that day and all that day and all that night. 
if he brought his servant, I think all the servant will will shock. Actually, what God done here is that God want to give the last chance to Saul. Actually, God can't take away or what he have. Actually, you Saul was naked to the earth. He have nothing. So, for brothers and sister, actually, when we came to the earth, we have nothing. All is grace from God. For we have wisdom, we have the ability to work, is also from God. So for Saul, actually, why he was the king is because of the Lord, is because of the God. But for for the time, for that time, he just want to hold on his throne, his position. But God want to tell Saul what what you what is your priority now? Why you hold on your position, your kingdom? But actually, you you came to the earth by nothing. So God want he to reflect himself that for Samuel anointed him, he was also. Um, touched by the spirit of God, so this is the second time for Saul prophesizing. So God want to remind him: Do you remember why you became a king? Do you remember that time you also feel upon, up、uh, you also feel with the spirit of God? So you have you have to memorize, memorize, remember. Remember your your past. The spirit of God fill upon you once again. So even you your clothes take away, everything take away. Do you Can you remember? Actually, all was come came from God, but because Saul's heart was hardened. So to, for today, for God gave us grace and grace, but we should return to God. Even now, maybe we are a good outlook. We are good. But actually, all we have, all we get, is came from God. If we not return to God, we just like a soul, and we will walk lower and lower, and we were in the darkness. But we should learn from Jonathan and David. If we in the light of God, we will walk upper and upper. For our life, we should know about God. Even Saul、so、want to kill David, but God just protect David. Even Saul was a king, but he was full of sin. For today, our heart have to return him. He is our savior. He is our God. We have to count on what grace we experience, brothers and sister. For we read First Samuel chapter nineteen, we can see the life of Saul before actually Saul was also the、um, chosen by God, was anointed by God, but he don't know 
、um, have thanksgiving to God and hold on God and just hold on His kingdom. And he just have the jealousy inside his heart, jealousy to David, and want even want to kill him. By this chap、uh, chapter, we know that before is only a mindset, a thought, and afterwards becomes an action, and he really want to kill him. And even the, before, this is only a, a evil mindset in his heart. But in this chapter, he just do it properly and tell everyone about that. We can see that in his heart, full of comparison. And full of jealousy, it's just like an evil spirit. He never deal with his life and deal with his sin, but he just lets that sins become bigger and bigger in his heart. For today, we have a chance that we can reflect ourselves. And return to God. Do we have a comparison in our heart? Do we always compare with others and have jealousy? Maybe in the marketplace. Do we compare with our colleague, or are we jealous to others? Maybe we are envy for the position of other colleagues and the high salary. Do we compare with others, or we compare with our friends? Maybe we admire that you're so good because you have a good job, or maybe I'm admired you because you earn more money and you live a bigger house. Maybe you admire the others' children because we just compare our children to others' children. Or we just compare with other brothers and sisters. Maybe you think that they have more spiritual gift, and he can serve God, and he have a chance to serve God, and he was someone is have more anointing. And inside our heart, we was full of jealousy. Or even we compare with our spouse, compare our ability. And compare our spiritual life, the spiritual gift. Or the ability to pastoring. May Holy Spirit come and help us and reflect our life. Do we have comparison in our heart? We admit before our God. Once again, we know that. We have comparison, the envy, the jealousy inside our heart. Lord, we come before you and admit, admit that in our life we have compared to each other. We have jealousy and envy inside us. 
We sometimes we will think that how come other people was better than us. We think that is not fair. God, we confess our sin and may you forgive us and cleanse us. Lord, just help us that we can have the sight from you. Always because we we were pride, that's why we was full of jealousy. Because we just confirm our position for what we can do. Lord, please help us that we have a thanksgiving heart. That we really know that you love us, that you chose us. We know that everyone inside in your heart was special. We know that you are the one chose us. You establish all of us, and you gave us so many grace that everything we have now and everything we can do actually came from you. We thank you that you create us in a special way, and everyone is different. Thank you, Lord, that because you create us in a different way, and we, everyone, have a different、um, spiritual gift and different talent, and everyone is specific. We praise God that every advantage, every strength we have. Lord, we are belongs to you. Everything is came from you. Nothing we can proud of. We know we are in、uh, in your hand. What you want to use us, then may you use us. We believe that you have the best way for us. May you put us in the in in the best position and pray that we can cooperate with our colleague and or. Our friends, that we believe that,、um, and we pray that we also have the heart of Jonathan. It is pure and simple, and is under the light of God. We not look what we have and what we don't have, but we just look upon you. We not compare with others. Holy Spirit, may you come and help us, just like Jonathan. He not look upon himself. Even he know that God not chosen him, but chose David to be the king. But because his sight is look upon to God, so he just came before Saul and remind his father and save David. May God just give us the heart of Jonathan. Is really pure and simple heart, and only see the kingdom of God, but not to want to get anything for himself. Let's pray for ourselves that we can follow God just like Jonathan with a simple. Pure and pure heart. Oh, for now, maybe you think about the people that you are compared with, and your jealousy, you are envy. Then, um, you can pray for him or her now that God can bless him, that he will be prosper, and God will use him or her in the kingdom of God. And pray for him or her that 
he, he or her can be used by God prosperously. Bless those people that full of anointing of God. May Lord bless the brothers and sisters, and the people and the colleagues beside us. May you bless them and use them. May you get the glory, brothers and sisters. I want to encourage you. If you saw the people, if you see the people that you will compare, you try to more praise them, so that we can. Um, overcome the evil mindset, so we can have joined together for what they have. Lord, thank you for you keep remind us and reflect ourselves. Just like Saul sends the messengers for three times, and they prophesy three times, and even you just touch um, Saul. And you give us the chance to return. May you just also help us learn from the Jonathan and David. And we only focus on you, and we not hold on our our spiritual gifts and what we have, but we only hold on you and more thanksgiving. May you use all of us, just like in the past you used David and Jonathan. Thank you, Lord, and hear our prayer in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. For today, First Samuel, chapter nineteen, verse twenty-four. He was Saul, and he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down licked all the day and all that day. Therefore, they say is Saul also among the prophets. He has also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in like manner. He stripped off his glorious clothes. He was at the throne. But he will forget that he was naked to the earth, and he will naked and pass away. He forget God, and he, there were so many evil thoughts inside soul. So, do we remember that we are naked from the womb to the earth? For today, God gave us healthy. We can have the ability to earn our living. When we hold on what we have now, is it we forget our God? For today, what we hold on is it the glorious clothes, the all glorious outlook, the good outlook, or the presence of God? So. Let's pray for our hearts now, Lord. Please come and help us, Holy Spirit. May you came upon us. In Jesus' name, I pray that the Holy Power of、uh, the Holy Spirit, the power fills you now. Holy Spirit, just speak to you now, just like for you spoke to Saul once again and again. And also let our heart sensitive to the word of Holy Spirit, that we will not sin you. Holy Spirit, just help us that we we look your word is more important than the glorious clothes, and important than any throne and any kingdom, because we should know that everything is came up. Came from you, so can sit on the throne is because of you. So can be a king is because of you. So we also know that if we we have you, then we have everything. May 
we satisfy and fulfill because we have you hear our prayer in jesus name amen thank you lord that we end our morning devotion here today bless all of you